So the first step in planting a fruit tree, in terms of investing in mycorrhizae, I don't know where you're planting your tree. You know, oft times people will convert a farm field because it's very easy. There's no clearing to be done. Or they might clear and pull out the stumps. And in the process, huge disturbance, the fungal ecosystem is broken. And then we come in with fruit trees that are varieties grafted onto rootstock. And those rootstocks, for the most part, are grown out in Idaho, Washington, Oregon, because it's just a very favorable climate to do that. But they're, they're grown on big farms. And those farms fumigate the soil every few years as a part of the process of rotating new round of rootstocks. So rootstocks basically come biologically empty. And even if the nursery is someone who's more organically minded and going to mulch and do what have you, that doesn't mean that the mycorrhizae are there. And again, depending on your source, it can get worse than that. We can get into the, the Home Depot tree and the, the Lowe's tree in the pot. But anyway, assume that it's not in place. And if the ground that you've worked has been disturbed, assume that it's not in place. Now, we can talk about cover cropping systems and, and ways to minimize the disturbance, but typically when you plan an orchard, uh, on a commercial scale anyway, you're going to go through a year, ideally, of cover cropping and starting to get more organic matter in there and maybe deal with weed seed loading in the soil, maybe deal with more <laughs> aggressive grasses like witchgrass or Johnson grass. Changing that ecosystem over involves disturbance. So typically we're not putting it in a place where the mycorrhizae are in place. So there are mycorrhizal root dips and powders. Um, two of the companies I like a lot are mycorrhizal applications and bioorganics. And when I say I like a lot, it's, it's these are companies that have proved to be reputable. When you're dealing with biological products that you can't see, you kind of need to know that these are people who are delivering what they say they're delivering. So when I plant, I like to use the root gel from bioorganics just because I can see the, the gel effect on the roots. Um, but if you've already planted, you know, usually I have someone who's sitting there now thinking, I planted my trees last year, now I have to dig them up and dip them in this root gel and put them back. That's where the mycorrhizal powders come in. And, and these, these are mixes of usually 10 to 12 species, two or three which are going to be right for the type of plant that you put in and also the climate, the place that you're growing. Another thing you can do if you have just a few trees, it gets kind of daunting to do many, many trees this way. You know your ground's been disturbed, your trees are one, two, three years old, um, but you don't need to go buy a product. Go out there and find a place where there's a healthy apple tree, a healthy maple tree. And there'll be different species of mycorrhizae in that soil near to the roots of those trees. And just taking a quart cup of soil and bringing it back to your, so your fruit tree, moving the mulch aside so you get closer down to the root zone, is, that is going to introduce spores and fragments of hyphae that are going to colonize your root system. It, it's not unlike making sourdough bread and setting apart a section of the dough just so you can bring back the organisms for the next round of baking. And that's what I call ant soil, the ants being the, the tree shepherds in the Lord of the Rings, for those who know that story. <laughs>